Hi, and welcome to the fifth video in our Proxmox series. Today, we're going to be taking a look at how we can set up cloud init with our Ubuntu VM and then convert that to a template to be easily able to actually spin up new instances of our Ubuntu server uh, with its own name, its own user, its own password, and its own IP address, saving you the troubles of having to go through that install again and configuring a new user and everything like that, which will let you bring up a lot more VMs a lot quicker. Now, of course, there are other tools that can do this, like Proxmox and other things like that. But what's nice is uh, like Ansible, uh, but in Proxmox, we actually have direct access to cloud init to where you don't even have to do it uh, the extremely complicated way. Typically, uh, Proxmox gives you a very nice GUI interface to interact with to set up that cloud init configuration file. So basically just a quick overview of what cloud init is on top of that little definition. It is something made by Canical to let you initialize uh, quickly the virtual machines on the cloud, um, which of course Proxmox or any other services like that is a very similar service, although it is directly on-prem, uh, could easily be in the cloud as well. And you can set up SSH keys, IP addresses, like I said, username and password, and we'll be also setting up the machine name as well. So let's go ahead and let's get started here. So we still have our two machines. We're going to be using our Ubuntu uh, 2404 machine here. So let's just go on to that here. And let me just make this a little bit smaller so you guys can actually see what's going on here. And let's go ahead and let's log in to our user here. So here we are logged into our Ubuntu box. So the first thing that we're going to really want to do is set up the um, a Nano if you wanted to. That will let you edit the um, cloud init configuration. Now, if you don't want cloud init to set up certain things, this is what you're going to have to do. So the first line we're going to want to put in there is going to be the sudo app install nano dash y now for us it's already going to be installed if you followed the exact steps as last time because we didn't pick the minimized server install so by default nano already comes installed but if you do do that minimized uh, which of course if you're trying to make multiple vms might be the way to go so each vm would have really its own purpose um, you would need to install Nano there. Now, I'm not going to make any changes to the configuration here, but I will show you guys how you would be able to do that. So we're going to type in sudo nano, and then we're going to do a slash etc slash cloud slash cloud dot cfg, and that's going to open up that config file. So here you would be able to actually remove any of the modules you don't want um, which typically in your config modules, maybe you don't need the snap, the Ubuntu advantage. Um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, the disable EC2 metadata, you might not need that either. And then there's quite a few in the final modules that you might not need. Maybe you don't need Puppet or Chef um, or the fan. Um, so it really depends on what you're really looking for. We're just going to leave the file as is for today. Um, so the first step, and really there's only two steps that we need to do on this machine actually, is going to be the sudo space cloud dash init space clean space dash dash machine dash ID. And what this is going to do is going to initialize the cloud init on the Ubuntu 2404 because it does not come pre-configured for cloud init, and then it cleans up that machine ID, which is the unique identifier for the machine. And that will actually be recreated on the reboot. Um, and then that's when the cloud edit will actually generate all of its things once we spawn it from the template. The next thing that I like to do is just a sudo fs trim dash av. And this will just pretty much just make sure that we're not taking up too much space. And it is very useful for dynamic drives as well to make sure that we're not bigger than we need to be. 
So once we are all done that actually, all I like to do is at that point, just do a pseudo power off. And that's gonna turn off the system here. And then we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna right click on that VM and we're gonna click convert to template. And we're gonna click yes on the convert to template. And then we can come in here. Now you can actually do this before you add it as a template or after it doesn't actually matter, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to add our cloud init drive. And we're going to make sure that we pick SCSI here, S-C-S-Y-S-I, because if you do leave it on IDE, there has been some known issues, uh, especially with the CBOS BIOS, uh, the CBIOS. Um, or any EFI BIOS that the IDE CD-ROM does not work for cloud init anymore, and it does need to use a SCSI uh, bus for that. And then we're going to just connect it to our local LVM for the storage, and we're going to click OK on that. And now you can see we have our cloud init, but we won't actually be making any changes into this one here. What we're going to be doing is we are then going to right click and hit clone here. And then we are going to make a full clone. So there are some differences between a full clone and a linked clone. The full clone will be a carbon copy exactly of your VM, but it will also be fully independent from your template. The linked clone will of course be again a carbon copy but it will be using the same disk space as your template. So if you are very limited on your hard drive space in your home lab, linked clones might be the way to go. But because the way that I do mine on my one terabyte drive, I don't create the VMs very big either. I only usually give them 32 or 50 gigs of hard drive space unless I really need a lot of storage. In that case, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Uh, but in this case, we just made it 32 gigs. So I'm just going to make it a full clone here. And then we're going to give it a name. So to make it very obvious here, I'm going to name it Ubuntu-clone. And then we're going to hit clone here. And it does take a few minutes to clone that template here. So we can already see it, it popped up here, but it is locked. Um, so it is locked by that little icon here and up here telling you that it is locked because it is still cloning. So you can't make any changes at this point still. Um, so we're just going to wait for that to finish. It normally doesn't take any longer than like a minute or two. Of course, if you have a bigger uh, machine or a bigger template, it can take a little bit longer than mine. And there it is. So there's our Ubuntu clone here. And we can come into the cloud in it and we're going to give it a new user. So we know that the user in our uh, template was jacked here. So we're going to put our, our username here as test and we're going to click OK. And we're going to put in a password here. And I'm actually just going to put the password full blown as testing here just to let you guys know. And then we're going to put the IP here. We're going to set it to DHCP. I don't really have any static address that I would like to assign. Uh, but here you can also set it to upgrade packages automatically. So when you first launch that machine, it will automatically upgrade all those packages for you. And then you can also put in your SSH key in here. So if you do have a specific SSH key that you would like to use, you can set that up there. And of course, you can specify DNS servers and DNS domain. We're just going to use them as the host settings here. And then all we're going to do is we're going to hit start now. And we can just go into the console here. And you will actually see the cloud init do its thing on the boot up here. So if we actually just pay attention here, you're going to see this cloud init line here. It took 4.8 seconds and it's doing already some configuration. So it does take a little bit longer on the first boot here, um, but there it is. So we do have our Ubuntu clone and here you can see that it, it's doing all of its updates now. So that update package that we had checked off, that's just what it's doing right now. So we're just going to wait till all that is done and it seems like it's done. So we just have to hit enter here. And then we get our Ubuntu clone login, which is what we named our machine. 
So if we do the user test and then our password testing here, we actually manage to connect. And as you can still see, it's still doing a little bit of updates here, but that's all right. So we can see that we do have our test on the Ubuntu clone. So it is fully made. Our new user got added in. If we had given it a static IP address, we would see our static IP address here. So now you can generate as many as you want. So let's just do that again, just for the sake of practice here. So we're going to right click, hit on clone. And we're going to do another full clone here. And we're just going to do, um, we're going to do Ubuntu uh, dash web for a web server here. Maybe we want to configure it as a web server later on. We're going to hit clone. And then it's going to pop up in here with the little lock icon. So we're just going to wait till it's unlocked. Because even if you try to then go to the cloud init, you're going to see no cloud init drive found. That's okay because it's locked. So it's actually not done cloning yet. So that's why you're seeing the no cloud init drive found. So we're just going to wait a little bit here. And then once that lock is gone, we're going to be able to perform our changes. So there it is. And then we're going to put our user here. We're just going to put it as, um, let's put that as jacked programmer here. And we're going to put in a password here as well. And let's go ahead and let's give it an IP address. Um, which is going to be 192.168.50.250, let's say. And that's going to be slash 32. And let's put our gateway as 192.168.50.1. And let's click OK here. And let's hit Start. And that should boot up our machine with all of those settings here. Once again, it's just going to take a few moments here while that sets up. And there it is. So it's doing, it's going to do the updates here real quick. While it's doing the updates though, we're just going to go back to our old clone because we do have that Kimu agent that we set up. So here you can actually see that IP address, even though we didn't install the Kimu agent on it. It was all part of that template. So that just shows you guys that it is there. So if we go back, you can already see that our IP address took the proper IP address that we gave it in the cloud init. So that is awesome. And if we go into the console here, we're just going to hit enter. So there's our Ubuntu web. And we can log in here with jacked programmer, put in my password here. And there it is. And you can see the IP address here as well, which is the one that we set up in the cloud init drive. So that is how you can easily make clones of templates and have them pretty customizable with the cloud init. Now, again, there are other tools out there like Ansible that would make this again, a lot easier and give you a little bit more configuration. Now, you can go a lot deeper with the cloud in it, but as a base with Proxmox and the GUI, this is the very easy way to get started with cloud in it and start to be able to virtualize your VMs a lot quicker and spin them up a lot quicker. If you guys have any comments or questions or specific things that you guys would like to see on the channel, please let me know in the comment section down below and be sure if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit that like button and also Make sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.